Whoa, dude. <laughs> Gonna take my head off with it. Hello, internet video viewers out there. Shell here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming to watch my video. Let's go ahead and get the obligatory disclaimer out of the way. I make these videos to entertain and to educate. They're not for you to emulate, so please don't try this at home. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can try this one at home. Really? Really. Are you sure? Well, there is hot glue involved, so kids, get your parents' help, okay? Well, hmm. great. Except, except, except. And, uh, let's, what? What? Except at the ending. Except at the end. So apparently there's something big going to happen at the end that you shouldn't try at home. We'll warn you before that part happens. So, what are we doing? Boomerangs! Okay. I'm an 80s kid, and there was a movie that came out in 1983 called Krull, where the hero used a five-pointed throwing star. <laughs> it was returning. <laughs> But that movie, Crawl, came out when I was 13. And of course, I went out to glue some popsicle sticks together and started throwing them in the backyard and realized they curve. But it didn't really boom a boomerang. But I had tons of fun with it. And I just thought about it again. And I thought this time we'll upscale it to some of these larger craft sticks and see how well it works. It works exceedingly well. Crawl! Okay, so go out and get yourself some of these crap, jumbo craft sticks. It says over seven and a half inches. They're actually eight. The design is super, super simple. You need five sticks to make a five pointed throwing star. I've tried three. Eh. I've tried four. Eh. Five is the best because it's what they did in the crawl movie. Plus, it, they do really do fly exceedingly well. Putting these together are super simple. It's basically just a five pointed star pattern with each stick laid on top of the preceding stick in spiral staircase fashion. And you don't even have to get them super even. You can kind of rough it out and glue them together. I made many like that and they fly, they fly very good. But I thought Let's you know. Let's get a five-pointed star shape and figure out the angles and make, kind of make me a pattern so I can do it a bit more accurately. So what I did is I just went to Google Images, found a five-pointed star, printed it out, and we need to mark off this center line here and the center line here. And that'll give us the angle we need to create a more accurate five-pointed boomerang star shape. I'm going to take where this part right here joins to that tip and we're just going to extend that line. We've taken where these two lines meet here and we've extended it out through the tip of that star. And we're going to do the same thing to this tip. And since our uh, craft sticks are about an inch wide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off put a mark there here, go up here again, and basically all I've done there is I've just taken this line here, and we're going to extend it to be as wide as these popsicle sticks are. So we're just going to extend two parallel lines out from that center line of that star. We'll do the same thing here. There. We've got a way that we can replicate that angle one after another, after another, after another, after, as we glue these pieces together. 
where these intersect, that helps us actually find the center of that as well because that piece right there will fit right into this little area. Like so. See that? And so the next one will go in like so. And there we go. Now that will help us accurately place each stick upon the next. It's time to get out our favorite tool, the hot glue gun. I'm just going to add a little glue right here. Get that lined up. Hot glue is kind of forgiving because you can uh, make a little adjustments before it completely dries. And there we go. So, think of this as number one. That's on the bottom. The next one's number two. Number three has to go on top of number two. So we'll spin our jig around, line up number two, so that we can add number three at the correct angle. You can use any type of glue you want. When I was a kid, I think I probably used Elmer's glue, and if I remember correctly, I kind of wrapped it a little bit with string around, so it had like a bulbous center. And then just kind of soaked it in glue, and it stayed together pretty good. I'm sure I did lots of art to it too, and I didn't make this one look like the crawl. I'm, I'm a, I'm a grown up now. We'll get number three lined up there. Now we'll line up number four. This one's a little hard to see because all these got in the way, but if you follow this line here, you'll see that this line will meet that number four right along that edge. And then if you look straight down, you'll see they're lined up there, and you know you're good. Good to go. Good to glue. It's so easy and it flies so well, it's unbelievable. So you might have noticed that there's two different ways that this can be made. And the one we just made is a left biased boom and star. I don't know what to call these yet. But they will it'll go like a classic boomerang. When you throw it ahead, it'll spin off to the left. Or your right. Left. In this way. And how you figure that out is you think, okay, here's number one. Here's number two, number three, number four, number five. If you count up the stair steps and it goes counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, then that's a left biased boomerang. On the other hand, like this one, you see when I put this one's bottom step on the bottom and count up to the next step, it moves to the clockwise. One, two, three, four, five clockwise. That makes a right biased boomerang. So when this one is thrown straight ahead, it'll veer off to the right and come back that way. That's important because you don't want your buddies to stand over there and say, stand over here, we're safe, and then throw the left bias one and hit them in the face. So safety first, people. Know which biased, know how biased your boomerangs are. You need to, you need to find out, you need to be sure with what's your bias, your boomerang is boinging ball. That's important. You need to know which bias it's important. You need to know the bias of your boomerang. So, how does that work here? Let me, let's revisit this. Okay. So, like I said, we'll label that one A and that one is B. So, if you want right biased boomerangs, you'll start with B. You'll follow with A. You'll move A to B. Continue all around. That creates the right biased boomerang. If you want left biased, a down first, and then B. Aha, see then you'll spin this way, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And that creates a one, two, three, counterclockwise. Great. Got it, got it. Now, I prefer the right biased. I know it's kind of opposite the way classic boomerangs go, 
But I made a bunch of these and I threw them for days, just kind of perfecting my throw and the catch. And they're pretty easy to throw, but I wanted to get pretty good at it because I want to do some tricks. I'm going to like throw two, catch them one at a time. And you know who me, I might have to build a flaming one. So I want to try to catch it. Um, we'll see. That'll be for later when it starts to get a little dark outside. So like I said, I prefer the right bias ones. I made a lot of them and they all happen to be right biased. And before I discovered flipping that design around and making left bias ones. But I got really used to throwing them and catching them from the right that I'm good at it that way now. So, so I'm going to stick to these. But you can make yours whichever way you want. Remember, just start with B and then go A if you want right biased. Or start with A and then go B if you want left biased. Got it? Got it. I've invited my buddy Billy, otherwise known as Silent Worth. He's going to be over with his drone. We're going to get some over, overhead shots of me throwing the boomerang. Let's go outside and toss.
remember, some of the things in my videos are made to entertain and to educate, not for you to emulate. So next we're going to attempt the burner ring. We're going to turn the boomerang into a burner ring. All right, ready? Let's see if we're going to need something flammable. And I learned a trick from Nighthawk and Light when he made his slingshot powered flame and arrow video. And that is some fine steel wool. This stuff burns like crazy. And when it flies through the air, instead of like getting blown out, the more oxygen that hits this stuff, the more it burns. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold out some of this like so. You see this stuff is actually made in sheets. You can kind of pull them out and pull them apart. There we go. Look at that. So now I've got like two sheets of it. We're going to pull out oh maybe a third of one of those sheets again and then I'm going to separate that until I get a long string like so. And then I'm just going to kind of weave it. So I'm just going to start there on one edge. Just kind of weave it in and out. I should do it. I'm make another one, just in case. Here we go. Burner rings. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll go outside and check it out. I've wrapped steel wool around this and kind of weaved it in and out. We're going to ignite it. We're going to throw it. We're going to see if I can catch it in slow-mo. See if I can catch it in real life. Safety first.
too much drag. That's pretty fun anyway. Hey guys, I hope you liked that video. If you did, give me a big fat thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you try building these on your own, then let me know in the comments. Hit me up with a video or a picture on Facebook. I'm on there. Check me out. Links below. You guys also know what to do. Thumbs, comments, suggestions. How can they be improved? Subscribe if you think this is a worthy video. If you'd like to see more things, come check me out. Thanks for watching. Bye. -bye. Stuff with fire. If you like fire, you might want to subscribe.